All right. Oh, boy. I just, I just know my priorities. I don't hedge my bets. Time for the next aphorism. Aphorism 224. The historical sense... I'm, like, doing some Scooby-Doo shit right now. The historical... <laughs> you are doing some Scooby-Doo shit right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just one second. Well, Martin Heidegger yes. wants to meet a wait for a moment. <gasps> as he belches, apparently. I am drinking Coors Light. Ha ha! Very funny. Paul, do you have... <laughs> Do you have a copy of, of Beyond Good and Evil open to know how long this particular aphorism op is, is? Because if so, you're just my favorite viewer ever. If you're just like literally have like your personal copy of that show open even, now. That's even better than I have. I'm just listening to you. Yeah, no. Martin is just listening to me speak. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually, why I have to reread it sometimes. That's actually why I'm asking you to pause and trying to find your translation online. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be there. I like how this guy walks down the stairs with a knife. Oh god. I never, I've, I've never read the uh, preface to this book, but I'm looking at this translation, and the first line of the preface of the book is, Supposing that truth is a woman, what then? <laughs> <laughs> so, eh, eh, eh. That's, that's uncomfortable. Oh, Nietzsche. Oh, oh, we got hope. We got hope. Do we? Nietzsche. Are we, like, engaging oh, no, in some okay. sort of copyright violation? Like, this is, like, this guy's translation. Uh, I mean, if it's on page one of Google results, I'm not going to feel too bad about it. That's fair. Copyright is... Oh, it would be I don't... 100% agree with that. I think artists deserve to be paid for the fruit of their labor. I don't. That's a joke. Joke! <laughs> joke! I'm sure they they deserve to be paid, but at the same time, universities are heavily subsidized by the public, mm -hmm. so the public should be able to access the, what we do. I said artists. Well, I, I was talking about, like, Kaufman. Oh, right, but he's, you're talking about this. I yeah, like, like the actual translation. Yeah, no, that actually, that is a pretty good argument here, I would say. Artists should subsidize. He is a public employee. Exactly. Or at least we should look at it like that. Well, did he, is this something that he, is this, is this something he did as, as a, like, an official capacity with his university? Is there a distinction? I mean, he's being paid by, I, I assume he was being paid by a university when he was doing this. Or teaching and professorship. Mm -hmm. So I assume so. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm gonna find the right translation. So I got another question. What, what number are we on? 224? Yeah. If you could be any body part belonging to Nietzsche, what body part would you be? Um... The amygdala. You would be Nietzsche's amygdala. Yeah, because I feel like Nietzsche's, uh, like, fight-or-flight and fear response would be quite interesting. <laughs> uh, Paul has a response to our entire conversation and also an answer to your, your poll question. Okay. Paul says, this is, I assume, in reference to our talks about copyright law. He says, yes, a reasonable protest of this and JSTOR ended up with a brilliant man killing himself instead of taking 40 years in prison. Yeah, this is the MIT guy. And then he also says he would be Nietzsche's mustache. Nietzsche's mustache. I, I like that one too. That's a, that is about as good an answer as you can give there, Paul. The the famous picture with Nietzsche's mustache, by the way, is like totally after he's crazy. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. He, no. He no, just hasn't been lucid in like five years. No sane person would have that kind of mustache unless they're a hipster in Brooklyn. Although it is it is funny. Uh, he thought he he writes in his diary at one point like. And so he had, he had notoriously bad luck attracting people, and imagine that, reading him. Um, <laughs> was, Nietzsche was probably the ultimate mansplainer. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> no, see, I know you're saying you love me, but really it's just self-pity. <laughs>
Uh, All right. But uh, but no. So he has this line in his diary that says, "You know, I think it's my mustache. That's why I can't attract women." <laughs> <laughs> it's just really funny. God, to be so brilliant in so many ways, and then so just <laughs> extraordinarily incompetent in another. Yep. Oh, poor Nietzsche. He was probably just a really sad, lonely guy. It's a really thirsty guy. Oh All right. God, this one is like a page and a half long. Oh, this is a hella long aphorism. <sighs> okay. I don't know how I ended up. Stop being halfway through or something. Whenever okay. You get to a good point. Aphorism 224. The historical sense, or the capacity for quickly guessing the order of rank of the valuations according to which a people, a society, a human being has lived. The divinity or the divinatory instinct for the relations of these valuations, for the relation of the authority of values to the authority of active forces. This historical sense to which we Europeans lay claim as our specialty has come to us in the wake of that enchanting and mad semi-barbarism into which Europe had been plunged by the democratic mingling of classes and races. Only the 19th century knows this sense as its sixth sense. Okay. Let's stop there. Okay. So what's the historical sense? What is the historical sense? Yeah. I don't know. So my translation says, the ability quickly to guess the rank order of the valuations that a people, a society, an individual has lived by, or the divinatory instinct for the connections between these valuations, for the relationship between the authority of values and the authority of effective forces. See, I have active and not effective. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's the same thing for him. Yeah, maybe a couple different changes. Mm -hmm. um, but, so the historical sense, uh, which he thinks that Europeans claim is their distinguishing characteristic, their, I guess, their ability to, like, view history, right? And I guess he might, uh, m m he's probably here, I mean, he uses the word historical talking about Marx and Hegel. Um, philosophers of history had big historical views, were able to view history through, they thought, an objective lens, right? Uh, and I think he might here be talking about um, the ability to, to do that, right? The ability to uh, look at a people or a society or an individual um, and determine the uh, way that they have structured their life around the different values that they have, right? The rank order of the valuations that a people, a society, an individual has lived by. Um, that, that's the most sense that I can make of that. But it's actually like, looking at the text, it's somewhat of a confusing... Paul concept. adds that yeah. Europeans have a sense that the long history makes them better than Americans. Ah, so it might also be that. Uh, but Nietzsche didn't really talk much about America, so I'm not sure. But, um, claims our distinguishing characteristic, comes to us as a result, the half-barbarism. But so why would, why would that be a result of the enchanting and half-crazy half-barbarism into which Europe has been plunged through the democratic mixing of classes? Why are you staring at me? <laughs> Ask the question. Why are you mixing all these classes with your democracy? Well, no, I don't think he's saying it's a it's a bad thing. Um, at least he hasn't said that yet. Uh, oh, yeah, so he mentions spirit later on, which suggests that he's talking about Hegel. Mm -hmm. um, at least in a little bit. I don't know. Should try Try going on a little bit more. Okay, so this is a particularly dense part of the book, apparently. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what he's talking... It's, it's possible that they're also... He's talking about something that we just aren't exposed to 100 years after he's writing. <laughs> Quick question before we continue. Leon, have you made any progress? Yes, I have. Actually. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so there's lots of little dots on that map, though. Yeah. It's fine. The past of every form and way of life, 
of cultures that formerly lay right next to each other, or one on top of the other, now flows into us modern souls. Thanks to this mixture, our instincts now run back everywhere. We ourselves are a kind of chaos. Finally, as already mentioned, the spirit sees its advantage in this. Cultures that used to lie side by side, or on top of each other, radiates into us. Uh, we modern souls. Um, our instincts are running back everywhere. We ourselves are a type of chaos. God. The hell are you so, <clears throat> this one is tough for me. Um, probably because I'm drinking. Um, but the idea could be that, look, um, Nietzsche views culture, societal structure, values, as ways to structure, like, our psychology, basically, to, and, and, you know, we sort of got that with the Christian, Christianity and the pity thing, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is that we have these natural desires, they have to be expressed, but culture tells us how they're going to be expressed, right? And so when he talks about, you know, Europeans achieving something through the democratic mixing of classes, that... And thanks to that, uh, the past of every form and way of life, of cultures that used to lie side by side, radiates into us. Mm -hmm. um, and that this, is, this allows us to um, become a sort of chaos. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is, this is just Nietzsche being kind of really racist. How do you get that? I wasn't going that way. You weren't? No. Okay. But it could be there. Right, so Paul, Paul, just, Paul just actually just wrote as well, yeah, there is some racism there. Hints at the mixing of race being connected to culture, f falling into disorder. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not like a disorder of society. And right, so like, I, I want to push against the racism charge on that basis, because, uh, the, right, so like, like in, in Zarathustra, like me, me and Don read a couple passages of Zarathustra, tango, right here, tango, or one passage, one, one of his books thus spoke Zarathustra, and he's got my favorite line of Nietzsche there. Uh, which is, one must have chaos in one to give birth to a dancing star. I tell you, ye still have chaos in you, right? The idea is that that's a good thing. Like, you need to have a little bit of chaos, because chaos is where new things come to be. And for him, chaos is just, like, lack of adherence to the existing structure. Right, not, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it, it's like, it's a neutral thing. Mm -hmm. You know, good things and bad things can come from chaos. And so, at least on that charge, if he says that, hey, this thing has led to chaos, I don't think that that's a bad thing for Nietzsche. Um, but again, and again, it's... This really, like, the, man, it seems like with Nietzsche, uh, and, K, and Paul points out that chaos was mentioned in the previous aphorism. Really good, let's look at that. Like, this is one of the challenges of Nietzsche. His writings are so deeply and intentionally interconnected. He kind of expects you to know what he's talking about. Well, he was a philologist. He right. expected his texts to be studied with the rigor that he studied other texts. Huh, that's really interesting. I never thought about it that way before, but that totally makes sense. Yep. Huh. Oh my god! Where is chaos in the, uh... I just took one! Yeah. Um, I've punched women tougher than you! <laughs> He also mentions historical spirit. Yeah, I don't see the word chaos. Maybe it was the one before that one. Hey, what the hell is that? Stop what you're doing right now. Paul adds, which is what historical and kind of current study of philosophy involves. But I'm not sure what he's what he's referring to. Stop Unless it's like the way that we're talking about how Nietzsche uh, is, is doing philology. Do it. it is. Yeah, he's talking about philology. Okay. Figured it out. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's people nowadays that want to critique that. Right? Mm -hmm. And there there were... I guess I guess Russell's after Nietzsche by like a couple decades. But Yeah, Russell is the early 19, like 1910s? Yeah, that's when he starts. He writes right. all the way to like the 70s or right, something. Right, right. Um, but I mean, there's there's push against that sort of thing. The idea that you should.